In class on Friday, we ended with uh, these three questions up on the slides. And in this video today, I'm going to be working through these questions. So uh, we were the prompt we were given here was to tell tell everything you can. about the motion in the situation. Okay, so I'm gonna work through each of these situations individually. Okay, so in this first question, a subway train starts from rest and accelerates at two meters per second squared for 12 seconds. Things that I notice when I look at this problem, one is that it starts from rest it's accelerating at a constant way, and I'm given some time frame of 12 seconds. So the first thing I would do here is I would start by recording the things that I'm given. So uh, I would start here by drawing an acceleration versus time graph. Uh, let me change the colors of that. So it tells me that the train is moving uh, accelerating in a constant way at two meters per second squared. So I'll just draw a nice straight horizontal line, two meters per second squared. Um, and that that lasts for 12 seconds. So I'll mark on my time axis that's that's 12 seconds. The next thing I would do is I would start thinking about, well, what does this tell me about the velocity during that time? I'm already told that it starts from rest. Uh, so now I just need to use the information about the acceleration to tell something about the velocity. So I know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time or the derivative. And so having a constant positive acceleration here tells me that I should have a constant positive slope of the velocity graph. So on the velocity graph, I start at zero, and then I say I want to draw a constant positive slope from here. So that goes this way. Okay, and I'm going to concern myself with 12 seconds. Okay, and then position graph I can also use from here. I know that the position graph uh, is, let's call this position, uh, the position graph, to go from the velocity to the position graph, the velocity is the change in the position over the change in time or the derivative of the position. Right? So what this tells me then is thinking about what the velocity is doing, it's constantly changing and getting uh, faster. So that tells me that the position graph for this uh, scenario should have a constantly changing slope and that slope should be getting constantly bigger. So if I start by drawing some tangent lines, I start by drawing more horizontal lines and then lines that are getting more and more and more vertical. And that tells me that that is a constantly changing but getting steeper slope. The other thing that I needed to notice here was that this was a positive uh, velocity graph. And so that tells me that uh, my position should be increasing. I should be moving away from the zero. So just connecting up those tangent lines I get a nice curve from my position graph. And again, I'm interested in the 12 seconds. Okay, so other things that I could tell you about the motion here. Well, one thing I might be interested in is telling you what is the velocity that the subway car reaches at 12 seconds. And I might be interested in asking what is the position, how much distance is covered um, during that 12 second period. So again, to do this, I can go back to these same equations I'd already written. So to go from, to get to the velocity, I come back to this acceleration expression. And I use the idea that the change in velocity over the change in time is equal to the acceleration. So this tells me that the change in the velocity is equal to the acceleration times the change in the time. The change in the velocity is just saying delta Vf minus Vi is equal to A, and delta T here really just means T. And I already know that the initial velocity is zero, so I'm left here with just Vf is equal to At. And I know both of these numbers, so Vf is equal to 2.0 meters per second squared times 12 seconds. 
And so that tells me that out for 12 seconds, this BF is going to be 24 meters per second. So I could put that back up here on my graph, 24 meters per second. Okay, and similarly, I, I asked myself, well, what's my position? Um, and this is a little bit trickier because uh, the acceleration was a nice horizontal line, so I did, there was, it was very easy to go from the acceleration to the velocity. But the velocity is an increasing line, so that means for every second, I change how much distance I travel. I increase the amount of distance I travel. So I think the easiest way to do this here is to think about if the velocity is equal to the derivative of the, po the position. That means that the position is equal to the integral of the velocity over time. Okay, and in this case, I know that the integral just means the area under the curve. So I could just say, oh, looking at this graph, I know that that area must tell me the change in the position. Well, this area is a triangle, so that tells me that the delta x here is equal to 1 half base times height, right, because that's the area of a triangle. So delta x would equal to 1 half. The base here is going to be... 12 seconds, and the height here is going to be 24 meters per second. So delta x then is equal to 144 meters. So I can add that to my position graph. Add that to my position graph. Okay. And at this point, I'm done with that problem. I've, I've found everything I could tell you about the motion um, of this situation. Okay, so in this next problem, a ball is dropped from a building that is 52 meters high. This one uh, doesn't give me quite as much information. In fact, it seems like it gives me very little. But let's see how far we can get with it. So the first thing I would do here is I would start by uh, representing what's going on. So this is my tower, my building. Uh, and I know it's 52 meters high. Uh, and I'm just dropping a ball, which tells me that my initial velocity should be zero because I didn't throw it, I just dropped it. Okay. Um, and so I guess the first thing I would do here then is to draw a position graph uh, because that's the, that's the starting place that I had. Oh, but then as I start to notice, as I start to think about drawing my position graph, one thing I realize is I don't know whether I should call this ball as moving up or moving positive or moving negative because I haven't defined a coordinate system. So let me do that here. Let's define our coordinate system. Let's call down to be positive because my ball is moving down. So that makes it easy. Okay, so if uh, down is positive, then in drawing my position versus time graph, what I know is that when I drop a ball, it constantly speeds up. It doesn't just drop at the same rate. Uh, and so that means that my slope here should be starting out flat and then constantly getting steeper in the positive direction. Right? Uh, and I know that if, it's, if I called this initial point zero, so let's add that to our reference frame. I called the initial point at the top of the building zero, then on my graph, uh, this final point must be 52 meters because the ball is going to go all the way to the ground. Okay, what I don't know here is how long it takes that to happen. Okay, so what else can I do? Well, uh, well, I just said out loud that the velocity must be increasing all the time. So let's draw a velocity time graph that shows that. So I know that velocity must be increasing constant due to the pull of gravity in a constant way. And I don't know what this final velocity is. Um, and I don't know what this time is, but I know that this time has to be the same as the time of the position graph. Okay. Uh, and then there's one other piece of information here that I've been using throughout, 
uh, but let's just make it explicit here, is that the acceleration in this situation is due to gravity. And so I know what that number is. I know that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81. Well, that did not mean of space. Meters per second squared. So given all that information, um, now what I would like to do is be able to try and think about how I can tell you something about the time or that final velocity when just before the ball hits the ground. Uh, and so again, I'll use this. Inf I'll use the relationship that the change in the position is equal to the derivative. Sorry, let me undo that. Is equal to the integral of the velocity over time, right? And again, my uh, my region here is a triangle, so I can say that the change in the position is equal to one-half base times height. And in this case, I know what the change in the position is. It's 52 meters. But I don't know the height or the base. Okay, so this didn't get me all the way. So let's use the other relationship that we know, that the acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity over the change in time. So that tells me that Vf minus V0 over T. So now I have a relationship that tells me that acceleration is Vf over, v, over Tf. So I could choose to replace Vf or T with something about the acceleration. Um, so in this case, in this case, let's replace Vf in this situation with T. So we'll solve this guy for T. So T is equal to Oh no, let's solve it for Vf, sorry, that's what I just said I was going to replace. Uh, so Vf would be equal to At. And so what we'll do is we'll plug that into this expression here. 52 meters is equal to 1 half At times T. So 52 meters is equal to 1 half At squared. Right. So now I know what the a is because it's just due to gra it's the acceleration due to gravity. So that's nine point eight one meters per second squared. So here I can solve for t. So t squared then is going to equal two times fifty two meters divided by nine point eight one meters per second squared. Right. Let me just finish this up. Let me move this over here. So. Doing my math, that means t is the square root of 104 meters over 9.81 meters per second squared. So plugging this into my calculator, I get the square root of 10.6 seconds squared, which I get then is 3.2 seconds. So what this tells me then is to travel down this 52 meter pathway, it takes 3.2 seconds if the ball started from rest. Okay, so now I can use this information and I can come back to find my final velocity. So final velocity is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared times 3.2 seconds. And using my calculator, I find that the final velocity is 31.39 meters per second. Okay, and so now we're done with this problem. We found, we know what the initial velocity, final velocity 
initial position, final position, the time that it took, all of those things um, to happen in this uh, scenario. Okay, so now we're on to the last problem. An antelope moving at a constant acceleration covers the distance between two points that are 80 meters apart in seven seconds. Its speed as it passes the second point is 15 meters per second. So I said in class this is the most difficult one, um, and that has to do with, so it's still constant acceleration, so that's important, but instead of it telling us how much distance really it covered, what it tells us is the distance between two points is 80 meters, and we know how long it takes them. Uh, in order for the antelope to be running, though, already, we can't assume v naught is equal to zero. We that doesn't make sense here. So we need to have some initial position that the antelope is already moving at when it passes the initial point. So let's start with that uh, statement. Let's define the direction that the antelope is running as positive, and he doesn't start at zero. He starts at some other distance uh, here, we'll say. All right, so starting with a velocity time graph then, let me undo that. What I want this thing to do is I want it to start at some value that's non-zero and increase a constant acceleration, increase its speed over that time. All right, so let's call this V naught. Okay. And uh, what I know is that from the time when we start until the time when he passes a second point, it takes seven seconds. So again, we can draw a position graph that represents a similar idea. Okay, and here what we know is that the distance between his two points, that this distance is 80 meters. So let's say he starts at some initial position x, and then this uh, final position will be x plus 80. And we know that he's constantly increasing his speed. Uh, and so I can do that same thing with drawing a series of tangent lines to have an increasing speed. All right. Uh, and so the last graph that we could draw here is an acceleration. And what we've said is that his acceleration is positive and he's moving in the positive direction. Sorry, acceleration, not velocity. Uh, and we don't know what that value of acceleration is. So we know, it's in, we know it's a constant, but we don't know what the number is. Okay. Oh, and I should have put some time values here. So we know he crosses this point uh, seven seconds. Okay. So this, this problem, if we start immediately with equations, can get a little complicated because there's a lot of unknowns and we'd have to work with multiple equations at the same time. So I want to use this problem to illustrate the power of graphs. So the information that I'm given has to do mostly with the position uh, graph. And so what I want to think about is how can I use the information that I know about the position, which is really the change in the position as 80 meters, how can I use it to tell me stuff about the other things? So the first thing I'll start off with then is that I know that the uh, velocity is equal to the derivative of the position. And I know that the, then that the change in the position is equal to the integral of the velocity. Okay, so in similar ways to what I've done in the other two problems, if I think about what the area under the curve of this velocity graph is here, I actually have two chunks. I have a rectangular chunk, and I also have this triangle chunk. And so what it means to say that this, this change in position is equal to the integral says that I need to take both chunks and add them together to tell me what the change in the position was. 
So in this case, I'm going to have delta x is equal to a base times height, which in this case would be a, a base would be the time, and the height would be a v naught for this initial triangle, and I would also or a rectangle. I'm sorry, uh, and I would also have the uh, the triangle in the brown there. So that's going to be one half. The base here is again time. But the height here is actually Vf minus V0 because it's this height. Okay? So if I rearrange this a little bit, I get delta x is equal to V0 t plus one half Vf minus V0 t. Okay, and let's, let's try to simplify this a little. So delta x is equal to V0 t plus one half Vf t minus one half v naught t. So I see those are there. So I can write this as delta x is equal to one half v naught t plus v f t. Okay. I could even take the t out if I wanted to here. Okay. So the next step then is that I know this is 80 meters. I know this is seven seconds, but I don't know either of these two values. Oh, but wait, I do actually know one of these values. I know VF because I know that when he passes the second point, he has a speed of 15 meters per second. So here then I've written an equation with a little bit of work where I only have one unknown. So let's work with that. So what we'd be solving for here then is our V naught. So let's rearrange the equation to solve for V naught. So this is delta x is equal to one half, uh, one half v f t plus one half v naught t. So I'll move this guy over to the other side. I'm left with one half v naught t. And so I get two delta x minus one half vf t over uh, not v naught over t is equal to v naught. Right? So now I just plug in some numbers. So I get two times eighty meters minus one half fifteen meters per second times seven seconds all over seven seconds equals V naught. So plugging this into my calculator then, I find that Vf is equal to 7.8 meters per second. Oh, sorry, that was V naught, not Vf. V naught is equal to 7.8 meters per second. Okay, so now I know V naught, so I can plug that in over here. Um, the x naught is not particularly interesting because I'm talking about change, but I, what I would like to find is the value of the acceleration. So let's uh, move to the next slide to get a little more room to find the value of the acceleration. Okay, so on the previous page we had uh, this representation for our velocity graph. Let me velocity graph. And uh, we just found that that initial velocity was 7.8 meters per second. What we'd like to find now is what was the acceleration that helped us get there. So to do that, what we use is the idea that acceleration is the change in the velocity over the change in time. And we can expand out the change in the velocity here to mean the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the change in time. And so we know all these values, 15 meters per second minus 7.8 meters per second over 7 seconds. And so plugging all of that into the calculator, we get 1.03 meters per second squared. So that tells us what the acceleration of the antelope had to be in order to pass uh, 80 meters starting at 7.8 meters per second and accelerating to 15 meters per second. Okay, 
And so that's the end of this problem. We found everything that we need to know.